You're looking at Dave, oh, the you. coach Swartz. We are live at Santa Monica College track. Check it out. It's almost a private track. There are a few early risers here. Was Kevin Costner here today? Here. He is? In form. Yeah, always in fine form. Lots of runners. A lot of strong runners here, whether they're, you know, studs like Kevin Costner or you, uh, or just folks, you know, looking to get some fresh air. Dave is looking over uh, his notes uh, for today's boxing trivia. Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion and has something to do with Muhammad Ali. Rest in peace to the greatest. And uh, Dave, you actually attended four of Muhammad Ali's fights live. I did. Yeah. Himself. Which ones were they? I know, I know that you were at the, the the forum for his rematch with Ken Norton. Right. Which is really a close fight. Very close fight. Although, I, I you know, some people say that uh, Ken Norton really won all three of their trilogy. Yeah. I agree with the first fight, which he did win on the, uh, the scorecards by split decision. And I agree that Norton won the rubber match, yeah. which Ali won by, uh, I think, a, a close unanimous decision. Yeah. Um, but I actually think Ali deserved the, the rematch. But it was very close. It was a 12-round bout. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what else? So you saw you saw Ali Norton too. Right. I that saw, was in 1973. I saw the second fight with Jerry Quarry. Okay. What what year was that, that in? That was uh, 73. That was also 73, huh? And that was that, in that was in Nevada. That was in Nevada, right? All right. And Jerry Quarry's younger brother, Mike Quarry, right. was in the co-feature against an all-time great light heavyweight. What a knockout that was! With one you saw you saw one of the coldest yeah. knockouts yeah. ever in the history yeah. of the sport live. Yeah. That was scary. And then the other two fights I saw were at the uh, sports arena, and one was against uh, Alejandro, La the late Alejandro Lavarante. Okay. And from other, Argentina. From Argentina. Right. And they carried him out of the ring. Mm. And then in his next fight, he fought at the Olympic, and they carried him out, and he died. About oh my a God! Year and a half later. Who did he fight in the the the, the fatal match? That was against um, a guy from Oakland. Uh huh. And I was there. I was at that fight. Oh, I man. I think his name, I just can't remember. But uh, La Laurenti was winning all five rounds, just dancing around. All of a sudden, just ran out of gas completely. And right. couldn't fight. And uh, that was sad. I can't remember yeah. his name. Yeah. So he he, so he, probably, he suffered a previous head injury and took that into the fight. Yeah, they, he never should have fought again. Yeah. And then the other fight I saw was... Um, Alley against Archie Moore. Oh, and, you were at? So yeah, that's, and Arch that's the great Archie Moore's final prize fight yeah. was against it Muhammad Ali. Archie oh my Moore gosh. in four. Yeah, Moore in four. <laughs> right. Wow. And he did. All right, Dave, you've witnessed some serious history, did, yeah. you know, some serious Muhammad Ali history. That's and amazing. Yeah. And then I, uh, he was, I didn't really think about all this until he died just now. And I just think how important he was, you know, not only the boxing fans, but the to sports fans and everyone in general. I mean, he was just an incredible guy. And he was a global inspiration. Wow. I mean, he was just, it was incredible. It was yeah. just incredible. So, uh, he, I mean, he was, had everything going and that he, I mean, he was so smart. And I mean, the thing I remember about him the most is when he went to Manila. Yeah. And he was introduced his, this lady as his wife <laughs> to the, you know, the, to the media there, right? Or no, no, to the to, politicians. To, yeah, to, to the, the president. Yeah. And then his wife. Ferdinand Marcos, right? Yeah. Was it Marcos? Yeah. Marcos, yeah. And then uh, what is she famous for? Oh, uh, Imelda Marcos? Yeah. Uh, having all those shoes, right? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of shoes. <laughs> right. So his, uh, Ali's wife saw this. Yeah. She flew over there. Yeah. But I mean, the, Ali was the greatest, but he just, you know, you can see how, I mean, he was... Every woman in the world wanted Oh, him, come know, on. Forget I mean, about it. so beautiful yeah. and so smart, and, and he was good. I mean, and just an incredible personality, a transcendent yeah. person. I mean, just he larger was. than life. Yeah, That's the was. Ali that I remember from the 70s as a, as a kid, yeah. and the first sports figure that I paid attention to was just, yeah. was like the the best entertainer was also the heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah. That's how I saw it. And he got you. Because I didn't, yeah, because I didn't understand boxing. Yeah. yeah. I didn't understand boxing until Sugar Ray Leonard. Following Sugar Ray Leonard taught me about boxing and the other weight classes and it got me into following the sport but Ali was just Ali he just he was a superhero I mean he was he was large I mean he was the heavyweight champ and you know I didn't know anything about what happened in the 60s didn't care either but he know. was brave too oh he's incredible yeah 
And I loved the, the relationship he had with Howard Cosell. Like, I was a Howard Cosell fan because of Muhammad Ali. Yeah. You know. Well, they worked off each other. Now, of course they did. So, All right. Do you feel like Trim Silver? Today? Yeah, why not? Why not? So, um, I didn't and do... Speaking of uh, Ali oh, Query... Yeah, right, right here. This is, I think this is from the second fight. Yeah. So, you were there. I was there. You should have, like, members of the audience back there. <laughs> and it wasn't that crowded. It wasn't was, huge, right? No, yeah, no. It was, it, was, yeah. it was, you know, just sort of a you know, half-filled crowd. So. Can you see the screen if, if somebody yeah, wants yeah, to Yeah, I can see. If you want to call oh, in, yeah, I can see is, because uh, I don't. in L.A. we have this thing called June Gloom. Yeah. Which I really like. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you guys watched last week, but uh, Doug was incredible. I mean, I just, uh, people keep uh, calling me and talking to me about, they just can't believe he can do this. I mean, he is a genius. He really is. So um, I didn't really do my homework properly on the questions, but I'm just going to ask you a few questions about uh, Ali. So tell me, uh, who was his first pro fight? Oh, Dougie. Dougie, I, I am shocked. He's got a, he's got, oh. Dude has a weird name, like Husker or Tunny. Yeah, or Tunny. exactly. You got it. Something. Tunny. Tunny, Tunny Husker yeah, or something you like got that? It. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can play. <laughs> Nobody thinks Wait, about that Wait, how does guy. that happen that that comes into your brain like I that? Don't know. I don't know. I've that seen it. You know, I've seen the name. I know wow. it's, a, it's a kind of a... They're gonna a have funny to do. Name. They're, they're gonna have to my, do. Uh, my my rope skipping game is off. It's been a yeah. emotionally draining weekend. They're gonna have to do a study on your brain, <laughs> really. I and mean, this is incredible that you can remember that. You know, the secret is, I don't know anything about anything else. Yeah, well, no, that's good. <laughs> Ask me who the vice president is. I'm like, huh? <laughs> uh, okay. So, so tell old me, white guy, right? Tell me when the Tony Hunisker fight was. Where it was? What, what, where and when? You was it in Louisville, it. and was yeah, it a yeah. uh, when? It, it would have been uh, either 1960 or 61. Yeah, 60. Yeah, yeah cause like the end of 60. right off of the yeah the end of 60 because right off of the the Rome Olympics. And I'm gonna guess it was his hometown. I guess it was Louisville. Yeah. yeah. And was it a decision? Yeah. Six rounds. Uh, I don't know how many rounds, but it was a yeah. decision. And then he went on his KO thing. So. Yeah. Okay, and what was his... And he was a little guy. I mean, he wasn't a big yeah. heavyweight. No, he, he was, was like a, a light heavyweight almost. Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah. So uh, when was his last fight? His last fight was 1981. It was yeah. in the Bahamas. Yeah. And that was Trevor Burbick. Yeah, that was good. Who did go on to win one of the major titles. Remember, we knew the announcer, that guy. Who was the Remember announcer? Remember, he used to come to a place to watch the fights, that little guy. He was a PR guy and they didn't have an announcer. Oh, really? And he was the I, announcer? No, yeah, I didn't know him, that. You met him a few times. Oh, get out of here. That was his claim to fame, but I don't, and he actually did. That's a, something. He did a good job. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, I'm a little disorganized here. Oh, it's I'm okay. Sorry, I'm a little, but, uh, uh, I flew up, uh, I just got back a one day trip to uh, Monterey for Kathy Garcia's surprise birthday party. It was incredible. All our old fighters were there. Jerry Hoffman, he promoted fights in Monterey for 17 years. Twice a year, everyone was a sellout. And that was, Every did single he do one. the riot at the Hyatt? Riot at the Hyatt, it was incredible. And uh, Dennis Taylor was there, who has a, he has a website for boxing. He's a real smart guy. Does he still do podcasts? He does podcasts every Sunday. And uh, it's a really good show. He's an incredibly good interviewer. And if you read, actually, it's called the, uh, what's this website called? The Boxing. Uh, but it's good. If you go cool. to it, I go Google to his it. name? Uh, yeah, Dennis Taylor. Dennis Taylor. He's a writer. He's a good interviewer. He's really a great good interviewer. interviewer. Doug's been on the show. Didn't oh, he have oh, here's uh, a question. John Scully on there? Here's a question. Yeah. Um, can't read it. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a question. Yeah, they come and go quick. Yeah, I couldn't get it. Try again. <laughs> Try again. Anyway, it's called the uh, Boxing Amusement Park. And if you go to that website, and I go every day, I go a couple times, he has uh, the headlines of the day, and he gets these articles, and yeah. it's like a... It's like a hub. It's so and good. I think they have, like, a, a, a fights, too. Oh, he has every yeah, fight. Oh, old my fights God. He stuff, has yeah. all these old fights. But I just go to look at all the headlines for the day, and he has these great articles that you know sometimes you don't see. Yeah. Anyway. And he's a really, really good interviewer. Yeah, he's yeah. a great guy. He's from the Midwest. 
Well, of course, that explains everything. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, so uh, the next, I have to find this. Okay, so um, what was the date that Ali won the, the heavyweight title? He won the heavyweight title in 1964. Mm -hmm. What was the date? Gosh, I, I want to say it was in June. Yeah. And that was in Miami, right? No, wait. Yeah, yeah, it was that, in Miami, that was right? Miami, yeah. Yeah. And where Ali went completely crazy at the weigh-in. Yeah. I mean, like that they might thought... have been the the catalyst to make weigh-ins media events because he caused a, a, quite a stir in the sports world, uh, and and those headlines probably helped the closed circuit sales of List and Ali One, and uh, promoters might have been like, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> We should play these things up a little bit more. Because yeah. no one gave uh, Ali a chance in that fight. No, well, particularly after that outburst, they were thinking yeah. he, was, he was scared. He was no, they thought he had an emotional breakdown <laughs> and physical breakdown almost. Sonny Liston was a scary dude. I but mean, then, was... uh, you know, then, then he came back from that uh, yeah. foreign substance in his eyes. Yeah. Which is pretty incredible. I think he grew up in that fight, in those seven rounds. Yeah. Okay, now in the, the rematch. Lewiston, Maine. Yeah. 1965. The Phantom Punch yeah, fight. Yeah, but if you see, there's a famous photo yeah. of Ali standing over Liston and his legs are spread. Between his legs, you see the crowd. And if you look in that crowd, there's a young guy. Larry Merchant. Larry Merchant. <laughs> and, he's, oh, and he's like, oh, it's great. Here someone said, jumping like a boxer. Trying. Yeah. So My best imitation. <laughs> so Larry Merchant was at that fight. But, you know, Larry Merchant was also at... Um, Who's the Yankee that gave the speech when he retired? Uh, Lou Gehrig. Okay. He, he was six years old, and he was at Yankee Stadium for that famous speech. So he's, <laughs> and we, okay, here's uh, crazy to see Dougie been following you since Max Boxing started old, the old good school. old days. Good old days. So, so Dougie used to be the kid, and now he's a veteran. So How did that happen? I, it's, you know, it does kind of happen overnight. Oh my God! Like ten years ago, it doesn't seem long ago. Here's uh, neither does fifteen years. Super ago. old school. Yeah, that's what old guys do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go. so now I'm going to ask you, um, what were the last three fights that Ali had before he couldn't fight? And then he take off those years. The last three fights he had before the exile? Yeah. Well, the last one was Zora Foley. Yeah, which he looked great. He right? did. Yeah. yeah, he was Incredible. sensational. That was like that was Madison Square Garden, and that was 1967. You know, I... Huh? 1967? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and prior to 67, uh, gosh, it must have might have been uh, George Chavallo. Oh. Uh, uh, up in Toronto. Uh, can you hold this for one second, Dougie, please? I'm going to tell you, I have it right here. Coach has got to I check his notes. Saw, I know he fought Charlie Powell right after he knocked out Archie Moore. Yeah, but that was on his way up. That was before yeah, he had no, the title. So his last his, his last three up. fights would have been title fights. I know the yeah. last one before the exile was Zora Foley. And yeah, prior to that, it yeah, might have been uh, like, uh, I can't remember. Yeah. I think maybe Chavalo was in 66. Yeah, no, this Ernie is, Terrell, maybe? Yeah, Ernie Terrell was one of them for sure. Okay, yeah. okay here it was. So I got two out of three. No, I got Zora Poli and, and Ernie Terrell. Easy. The other one's easy. Oh, wait. No. And Terrell, was uh, Terrell the octopus? No. Zora Poli, Ernie Terrell. Oh, Cleveland Williams. Okay, Cleveland Big Cat Williams, yeah, who he really annihilated. Good, yeah. And some people say, oh, who does Canelo fight next? I don't know. Yeah. Hey, dude, uh, this is Jace Ben 84 uh, There's rumors that they're they're looking at uh, the, uh, the WBO title holder from the U.K., Liam Smith. But um, I've been told, Steve Kim said, uh, during the L.A., Fight Club Ring TV live stream on Friday that he spoke to Tom Loeffler and Loeffler says the folks from Golden Boy have called him. They have talked to him. Uh, Loeffler is in, um, he's in Ukraine right now. Uh, obviously, there's some Klitschko business. And uh, he says they're talking and they're, they're saying, hey, you know, um, as soon as they wrap up this case, this this court case with uh, Canelo uh, and uh, is it All-Star Boxing? All-Star Boxing. Yeah, yeah. Tuto Zavala's is it Tuto Zavala? Tuto Zavala yeah. Jr.'s uh, organization. Uh, yeah, as soon as they wrap this stuff up, uh, they want to resume talks. So, you know, it's not dead. The, uh, the the Canelo Triple G saga continues. It's not dead. They have not cut off communication. So, 
that's all I can say right now. Uh, but here's the thing: I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't have any angst over it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not focused on it. You know, if they get the deal done for this year. They get it done. If not, they'll 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 resume talks at some point. You know, I think the fight will happen. So I, I ain't worried about it. There's good fights to talk about. You know, like the one we had last night at StubHub Center on HBO: uh, Francisco Vargas versus Orlando Salido. Uh, I agree with the draw. What about you, Dave? No, I thought it was, the draw was good. Yeah, I thought six it was just a piece, great man. fight. And if I had to give it to one guy, I'd give it to Salito. Well, he finished stronger. I thought he won I'm, rounds 11 and 12. Here's uh, when you saw. Oh, when did. Oh, let's see. Oh, he said when Triple G and Canelo sparred, who won? Uh, I, you know, I wasn't scoring it like it was a fight, but uh, Triple G was, was the ring general, and he did land the harder punches. But Canelo, who had just won the WBC junior middleweight title, and was only 20, acquitted himself very well. You know what he tried to do? He actually he tried to stick and move early, and his jab was really good, and his lateral movement wasn't bad, but Triple G just timed him, got him with some right hands, and then got him with a left hook, I think after the second round, at the end of the second round, that rocked Canelo. And then from that point on, they did another three rounds, long rounds, I think they were four minute rounds, Canelo stayed in the pocket, and he did well. Think about, and Golovkin didn't quite have his pressure fighting style that he has now. He was more in and out, kind of more of a European. He reminded me of Costa Zoo, watching him at that time, because his really good power punch, it wasn't his left, it was a straight right. And it was kind of like a battle between Golovkin's straight right and Canelo's hooks. And it was good stuff, and they both tapped the body. And Triple G's strength. His strength was, yeah, it was evident. It was evident. And they wanted that because he won the title against a career welterweight, Ricky Hatton's brother, Matt, Matthew. And they were fighting another British dude, Ryan Rhodes, I believe, in the first defense. And Rhodes was real. Rhodes had fought at middleweight, and he was real strong at junior middleweight. So they wanted to get used to being in there with the big, strong dude. And... Canelo looked really good in that first title defense, which took place in Mexico. And Triple G was getting ready for Kasim Uma, who gave him uh, a tough fight because Uma wasn't backing up. So you wonder about what style that Triple G has problems with. Don't back up. Okay, here's one. Who wins at 140 in their prime, Mayweather versus Costa Zoo? Costa Zoo. Easily. It's an easy Easily. fight. Mayweather's style is a is a style that Costa Zoo relished. He loved that stuff. Yeah. Same thing I did, what I just said about Golovkin. Same thing to beating Costa Zoo. Don't don't stick and jab from the outside. Don't give him room. Don't let him come forward. You come forward. You back his ass up. That's what Vince Phillips did. That's what Ricky yeah. Hatton did to a 35 year old. And you know, I think faded version of Costa Zoo. Yeah. But still dangerous, obviously. He knew he was smart. He knew when to quit. Yes, he did. He was always a smart guy. One of my favorites. Oh, this one guy, first he said, hey, Triple G's a beast. And now he says, thinking the same, Costa Zoo's a beast. And yeah. he was. But, you know, here's the thing. These European guys are so smart. Yeah. You know, they're, they're disciplined. They're smart. You know, it's not, a, I mean, they take yeah. it really seriously. They do. Just like I see women's boxing. Yeah. I think the women really take it more seriously. Did you see yeah. uh, Sinisa? Sinisa Estrada? No, I didn't see that fight. It was a, it was a good yeah. fight. Yeah. She had to get off the deck. Yeah. And kudos to Golden Boy for, for putting her on the LA yeah. Fight Club and for including her on the televised and stream portion. And kudos to Tom Loeffler for putting uh, Sinisa Estrada on two of, of Golovkin's yeah. uh, undercards at the forum. And she's got a nice little following, too. No, but he, he's, you know, I mean... They had two women's fights. That's yeah, they did. Yeah. I know. Tom's, Tom's hey, Tom of, yeah. Loeffler is... You know what helps Tom? Tom, he has the European perspective. So he makes the, you know, inside the production of the fight yeah. on, on the inside of the arena. He does that up. And he's not afraid of, of female boxing. Well, you know something... Because it's big over in Europe. He doesn't let his ego drive him. Exactly. And he's a smart guy. He's just exactly. smart. And he's nice. I mean, the guy is so... You would never believe that he's that high powered. Yeah. I mean, the guy's a great guy. Yeah. So uh, I just saw a couple questions. I Oops. hear uh, who wins, Danny Garcia or Spence? No. I, I, li I like Spence. I yeah, Spence. yeah. I, Garcia was better at 140 yeah. than at 147. 
Um, from what I saw, uh, you know, I, I was at that fight at Staples Center earlier this year where Garcia fought Robert Guerrero, and I thought Guerrero was giving him hell for about five or six rounds, and then, you know, he made adjustments. He's, just, he, he's not easy. Garcia is yeah. not easy for any welterweight, but Spence is special. Spence is a lot yeah, Spence stronger, is sharper, more talented than Guerrero. I have to, I have to figure he gets to, to Garcia before uh, the, the final bell. I think, I think he stops Garcia late. Here, oh. Hey. I could be wrong, by the way. <laughs> hey, boys. Hi from Martha Vineyard. <laughs> oh, that's that's got to be Larry. Coach Larry. Very good. Hey, Larry's who played you. just opened. Hey, Larry. Are does, you going to visit? Yeah. Are you, going? Are you ever coming Seriously? back? Anyway, does the jump rope look uh, familiar, Larry? <laughs> so Larry and I have been running in this track for about 20 years. Not bad. Here it says, uh, who wins, Thurman versus Porter? Um, I like Thurman by decision, but uh, Porter's very live. I look at it as an yeah. even money fight. Yeah. I think uh, I think Porter's probably got the better whiskers, physically stronger. I think uh, Thurman a little more fluid, fast and fluid, a little more versatile. Um, maybe uh, he hits harder, punch for punch, but Thurman is, I mean, Porter is also heavy handed. He's so confident. I mean, it's hard to go against Porter. When you see Porter interviewed, it's just like, how can I go against this guy? I well, mean, you know something? He's he just has, so confident, and it's it's genuine. It's not, he has the emotional momentum going. He does. And, uh, he does, yeah. And he's not I, taking I think this Thurman lightly. has lost momentum. No, Thurman has definitely lost it. He got lazy mentally. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't believe he was in an auto accident. <laughs> I, I bet my life on it. No. I wish they had a line on that. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with Thurman. I like him. I'm still a Terminator fan. No, I, I like Thurman a lot, yeah. except he's lost it. You know, he's gone. He's not what he the was. The momentum isn't there. Uh, you know, there's. But, you know, he got spoiled. It happens. You know, it's like buying your kid a BMW when he goes to high school. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, who does Broner fight next? Himself. Yeah, that's his biggest battle, right? I'd yeah. love to see Broner in there with anybody. You know, everybody's talking about. Uh, Bob Arum settling the case with Al Heyman, and Arum has had done some interviews where he said maybe they'll do some business together. I'd like to see Broner fight outside of the PBC universe and take on one of Top Rank's tough guys. I'm not saying it has to be like, you know, I'm not saying take on Terrence Crawford, you know, Victor Postol winner. He's not ready for those guys. He really isn't. But, you know, I, w I wouldn't mind seeing him in there against uh, Mike Alvarado, if Alvarado continues to come back and win and get you know both guys are screwed up in their own way outside of the ring i think that's a it's a it's a fun matchup it's a it's a matchup that i would favor broner to win but you know it should be interesting while it lasts you know here's one will pacquiao versus canelo ever happen or just rumors <laughs> i hope they're rumors because no, they're pacquiao not would get seriously hurt in no that they're not they're not gonna fight yeah that ain't good no I'm... that would be terrible for canelo's reputation it would be yeah. terrible for pacquiao's health it's, you know, it's it, that would be a sick, gross money grab by the promoters. That's yeah. it. Anyway. And it uh, would probably sell very well. <laughs> no, I'm mean, You know, so, I mean, I mean it. Right. Like, we'd, all, we'd all diss it. I would diss the hell yeah. out of it, but well, Pac probably it would do a lot better than Canelo Khan. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but Pacquiao's going to need the money. I'm sure he owes, sure, he owes sure. top rank a lot of money. But don't hey, come back against the middleweight, you know. No, you can't do that, but... Anyway, or Canelo weight, either or. That's see, dangerous. Who do you think? What do you think about Robert Garcia, the trainer? He's, he's very sensational. Good. He's, really he's learned good. so much. He's yeah. he's as good as his father. Maybe he surpassed his father, and he's got yeah. a great crop of young talent. Yeah. A couple of them um, we're seeing, uh, you know, develop on uh, the 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 LA Fight Club series. Uh, Jonathan Navarro, who won last night. He is so much fun to watch. This guy, this kid Hector Tanahara Jr. out of San Antonio, Texas, real tall, rangy. I think he's a junior lightweight. He looks really special. And Robert's got a lot of talent. Yeah. He's got a lot of talent. And I, I think he's training the next generation. And the best thing that happens is that Rios left. Yeah. And the, the, the new generation there, they want to fight the way Brandon always wants to fight, but they're more disciplined. Yeah. They really are. Uh, and they're great kids. 
And Bam Bam's a great guy no, too. He's I a like great. Him. No, yeah. he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah, he can get a little weird. He can get a little weird with him. He's, he's got he's got that weird bully thing well, well, going. But exhaust. he's a he's a good natured dude. I know like he's him. a great guy, but he can yeah. exhaust you. Yes, <laughs> he can stress and you. I'm out. sure he no. He stressed me out more than a few times, man. But um, it's all good. Uh, the new generation, the, the new blood that uh, Garcia is currently bringing up. You're going to enjoy watching these guys fight. You really are, and they're learning the game quickly. So do you think he, along quickly. he's permanently in Riverside now versus yeah. Oxnard? Yeah, yeah, Riverside. He likes Riverside better because he had that gym in Oxnard. Was yeah, oh, yeah, but I think Riverside's better because he could focus more on just the fighters. It's like a it's like a camp. Yeah, yeah, it's like a ranch where where fighters just kind of uh, live and grow uh, among one another. I, I think it's a better uh, situation. Anyway, um, we're going to go. We really thank you for watching us. Rest and in peace, Muhammad Ali. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot.